Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you all for taking the time to join us today. Uh, we have lots of great new capabilities to share with you. Um, it's going to be hopefully a very exciting launch event, uh, talking about what's new here at Catchpoint. So wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining. Uh, we have on the right side, I believe, of your screens, there is a chat capability. Please uh, say hello, let us know where you're from, let us know that you're there. Um, feel free to ask any sort of questions that you have throughout. We've got a phenomenal panel of folks ready to answer all of your questions. There is also a Q&A tab that you can leverage as well uh, over there on the right to ask questions. Uh, and we will try and get to all of the questions that have been asked. So with that, you're probably wondering who's going to be presenting to you all today. Um, we've got a phenomenal panel of speakers. Uh, we have our chief product officer, Matt Izzo. Uh, and Matt will say hello shortly. Uh, we have our uh, head of solutions engineering, Bob Ruggiero. Uh, and then there is, of course, myself, Howard Beter. Um, I lead product marketing here. Uh, so definitely say hello. Don't be shy. Um, let's all, uh, I, we are a relatively small IPM community at this point that is growing rapidly. Uh, and we definitely want to uh, support you all. So feel free to jump in with questions. Uh, so we like to talk about Catchpoint as uh, the organization the internet relies on. We are supporting many of the largest organizations in the world, ensuring the resilience of their digital experience. Uh, and, um, you know, hopefully we're doing so for your organization already. And if not, we definitely would like to help. Uh, what we're going to cover today is we're going to be talking about our IPM platform vision. And the IPM is Internet Performance Monitoring. Uh, we're going to be talking about optimizing web experience, uh, automating all things around uh, IPM, and we're going to be talking about how we're leveraging AI to simplify uh, your uh, internet performance monitor. Now, uh, Catchpoint does a number of releases throughout the year. Um, we do uh, somewhere around eight to 10 releases a year. And uh, what we're going to be talking about in this webinar are our releases from Lion in May through Lynx uh, as of yesterday. Um, and uh, you're going to hear about all these phenomenal new capabilities. So here at Catchpoint, we talk about monitoring what matters, which is that internet stack, being able to monitor from where it matters for you where your employees are, where your customers are, where your partners are, all the way around the world, leveraging our observability network, ultimately to get to the answers faster, right? We wanna be able to shorten the time it takes to identify the issue so that the issues can be solved before it becomes an issue for your business. Um, and of course, what we focus on is this internet stack in the experiences. And this is just getting more and more complex as time goes on. And the stack's made up of everything from the network components to the protocols, uh, cloud services, internet core, different media, et cetera. Um, and that's where internet performance monitoring uh, really comes from. It's about providing full visibility into that stack, looking at it so that you can catch issues uh, across the internet stack for your customers, for your workflows, for your applications and network, for your APIs, and for your website experiences. Um, now, 
what we're doing with Catchpoint and what you're going to hear about is we're monitoring really from the end user now all the way down into the code with the addition of tracing. Uh, we believe this is something we are one of the only folks to be able to do all the way through the internet stack. Uh, and it's something that we're going to share with you today. So how many of you have challenges ensuring the resilience of your applications, right? All of your applications rely on the internet. There's hundreds, if not thousands of dependencies. And yet we're all still stuck with too many incidents, too many war rooms. Uh, maybe you don't have the visibility you need for the internet stack. You just have visibility of the application stack. Um, and you can't just wait to rely on uh, status pages from the different uh, cloud vendors. Perhaps, you know, you need to know right now, which is typically the case when there's an issue. What we're doing is we are launching a new turnkey solution called AppAssure. AppAssure is about providing resilience for your key applications. It's bringing together the really the best uh, and some of the newest capabilities across Catchpoint uh, to provide that resilience and insights and help you achieve SLOs and help you reduce MTGD and MTDR, ultimately, hopefully eliminating uh, those some of those war rooms. We want to help you ensure that there's less finger pointing among all your teams. Um, what we're doing with AppAssure is we've drafted uh, really uh, two different packages. It's no installs, no agents, no distractions, uh, really focused around one app or, or uh, a website. And it brings together sonar and stack map that you're gonna hear about today. Uh, it includes our onboarding. It includes a set of recommended tests. And this gives you that quick visibility to be able to monitor your key applications very, very quickly um, at a very um, nice price point. Um, so this is something we're sure many of you are gonna be interested in. We'd love to talk to you about this. Um, uh, definitely an exciting new offer from Catchpoint. All right, and with that, Matt, do you wanna? Sure, um, absolutely. Thank you, Howard. Uh, I am Matt Izzo. I'm Chief Product Officer here at Catchpoint. Uh, perhaps you've received uh, uh, email release notes from, from me, that's a, huge team effort, so they come from me, but many people are involved in, in that. Um, obviously not just assembling and sending those out, uh, but also all the people who work on the features here. Um, and you might've noticed, you just got a set of release notes yesterday because we did have a release. If you recall the slide that Howard showed earlier, the previous releases that we've had since our last uh, launch webinar, which I think was in May. So, um, uh, the most recent release was Lynx, which was yesterday. And our, our theme for this year, if you haven't figured it out, is Fast Cats. Um, anyway, if you look at your, your previous release notes, you'll see, you'll see all of what we've done individually. But as Howard said, um, we have one main platform, and that's one of the things that we focus on. We think data is very important. Um, so pulling all the information together, uh, pulling that data together, um, that is commonly accessible, uh, whether it's RUM data or synthetic data or now tracing, wherever your data is coming from, being able to analyze it, slice and dice that data in the various tools and capabilities that we have. That's what we focus on, all on, on one platform. So let's dive in and take a look at some of the things that we've done. Some of these are big features. Some of these are small features. Um, and, and, and capabilities. Uh, I hope that uh, you find some things that really uh, address some of the needs and interests that you have and, and make your uh, um, 
make make your effort at your job more valuable um, and and make your lives easier as well. So, um, a, a lot of what we do really is. Um, it, it comes from a, a, a monitoring footprint, and we we do operate uh, the largest active synthetic monitoring um, testing network really in the industry, and that continues to grow. If you saw a chart like this or the numbers that we had even just a few months ago, they were a lot smaller, not a lot smaller, but smaller by these amounts. So since the last release, we've added 83 new nodes in 37 new cities, 21 new ISPs, 12 new countries, and 43 new BGP peers. Um, so we're constantly growing, and this gives us close to where we're coming in on um, 3,000 vantage points. We're you know, at 2832. Uh, I would not be surprised if the next launch uh, webinar that we give uh, next spring, if, if we don't hit that 3,000 point, just because it does continue to grow. And other than the, the, the cloud nodes that, that you see on the left, um, our, the, the bulk of our locations, our monitoring locations, our backbone nodes, uh, backbone locations, uh, last mile, wireless, and so forth. These are all real locations. They're on dedicated ISPs, um, not you know third and fourth tier ISPs, but top tier ISPs. Basically, you're testing uh, customer experience from where your customers are, and your your customers are monitoring from real locations. They're on their laptops or their their mobile devices, and um, they're getting access to services from you know the ISPs that that you know. Um, Certainly your services may be in the cloud, they probably are. You're probably using multi-cloud. So testing to and from and between clouds, that's certainly very important. But um, the reason why I say this is because this is very important to us. If you're monitoring uh, the customer experience, the experience that your customers are having, you need to do that from real locations, um, where they are. Um, otherwise, it's kind of like, uh, I always think of having a uh, an earthquake detector in Kansas. See, there is someone here from Kansas City. If you have an earthquake earthquake detector in Kansas City for people who live in California, how helpful is that? Or a tsunami detector in the middle of the U.S. or in the middle of uh, China or Europe um, for people who live in Japan? It's not really very helpful. Um, anyway, it seems simple. We think it's very important, but it is kind of surprising that uh, um, there are still a lot of uh, solutions out there where you're you're managing your monitoring from places where it doesn't really matter, to be honest. So enterprise nodes, uh, these are catch point synthetic testing nodes that you deploy in your own environment. There are thousands of these deployed in all kinds of locations, last mile, um, point of sale, uh, data centers, branch offices and, and so forth, all kinds of locations. We've even had companies deploy enterprise nodes in corporate jets and campus buses and things like that. Um, and there are two types that we offer. The standard, um, which is really the full, does the full set of uh, synthetic testing with all test types and so forth that we offer. And uh, a light node um, that we had rolled out in the past year, that's, that is GA. Um, and the light node really focuses more on um, network oriented testing, uh, things like ping and trace route and object tests and so forth. So what's new is uh, for the standard enterprise nodes, we've added Red Hat, uh, Red Hat 9 and Ubuntu 22. I know there are customers out there um, and users who have asked us for those and been waiting for those. Um, so those are uh, have been rolled out recently. Um, we're very happy to be able to do that. And then for enterprise light, um, we now support ARM architecture. So um, deploying, this would be for, you know, point of sale, branch offices. Uh, maybe you're not doing um, heavy duty transaction web testing from those locations, but making sure that employees at that location, that services at that location are actually working and the network is up um, and, and performing well, that's really important. So uh, being able to deploy these in, you know, with Raspberry Pi and other similar nodes, um, uh, deployable also on on network devices like uh, uh, Cisco uh, routers and switches. Uh, that's 
those are common deployments and those are some of the things that, that uh, we have deployed. Uh, one other thing I missed, um, I just see on the slide, of course, um, easily remove node instances. So this is a, a rather simple but useful uh, functionality that uh, we've recently added. The thing with why is this important? Because enterprise nodes are extremely scalable. You can have multiple instances of a, of a virtual machine, a, um, a, a node agent that combine make up the entire enterprise node. So you can easily add instances um, just to scale up and just making it easier to uh, remove these instances is, is an obvious capability. So node to node test. Uh, node to node test is is really great for testing your internal network. Speaking of networks and enterprise nodes, um, uh, uh, by popular demand, we have updated our node to node test to include two new things. One is testing at one minute frequency. Um, by the way, if you need to test um, faster than than one minute, especially uh, network testing, we do offer continuous ping testing, which is available at sub second. Uh, frequencies, I think 200 milliseconds um, up to a second. Um, the other thing that we've added also by, by popular request is the ability to run node to node mesh tests between your enterprise nodes and the Catchpoint public nodes. So that is, for example, between uh, your enterprise nodes and backbone nodes, between last mile, cloud nodes, and, and so forth. Um, you, you can't run a node-to-node -node mesh test between just backbone nodes. Um, that's not a use case that, that uh, um, is particularly uh, useful in most cases, but you can run um, between cloud nodes and any other node type. And that is uh, useful because just like with your enterprise nodes, if your um, services and your solutions are deployed across multiple clouds, that's an important use case. So node-to-node -node mesh testing between your enterprise nodes, other nodes in the network, um, as well as between cloud and any anything else is um, relatively new and added within uh, the last few releases. We've uh, another another update for, for network monitoring is the ability to see more detailed information about the cloud networks that your, that your services are going through, that you are testing. So for example, if your trace route is traversing a cloud network, you can now see the service name, which you can see in the, um, the pop-up, um, the, the, the hover card there. In this case, it's AWS, AWS US East One. Um, if you're familiar with uh, cloud networks and regions, you know, you'll recognize that. You'll see the IP prefix, the region, uh, network border group, if that information is available. We'll also tell you if that information is actually verified um, by the cloud provider. Um, so that's very helpful. Um, we'll, all in all, this type of thing is important just to troubleshoot your network uh, when traversing the cloud. So uh, we think this will help a lot. Uh, there are some additional network uh, path enhancements that you'll see. I would encourage you to look at the release notes from yesterday. Um, this stuff is basically um, hot off the press or hot from the uh, our engineering and, and testing and QA environments um, deployed. And uh, uh, these capabilities are really brand new. This also from the Lynx release just yesterday. Endpoint monitoring. So endpoint this is what enables you to really test uh, from, from remote employee devices. So you can ensure that your remote employees, because we're still in a, in a hybrid world. I'm, I'm here at the, the Catchpoint New York office, but um, many of us work uh, from home or from other offices distributed uh, around the globe, really, and making sure that uh, employees have uh, access to and good performance for the applications that they need, um, that's critical. If you're in sales and you can't get access to Salesforce, you're in trouble um, and so forth. So many examples of that. So some of the new capabilities, just the ability to set alerts on specific processes um, that are running on, on a device, that's important. Um, uh, the ability to get additional uh, alert information uh, from the endpoint, just overall making it easier uh, and faster just to identify, well, which, which endpoint is or endpoints are having trouble when alerts are triggered um, and additional metrics from the endpoint itself in the alert webhook. Um, I'll mention something about uh, webhooks later, but 
Um, many, many customers of Catchpoint, users of Catchpoint, use the alert webhook to, to get live alerts um, as they happen and forward them to, to other systems that they use. So just providing additional metrics about endpoint alerts is very helpful. I think that includes um, the label, CPU, memory utilization, Wi-Fi, and, and uh, call control, call quality metrics um, in, in, in that case for endpoint. So we're very happy to be able to enable that. Duplicate dashboards, you know, it's a pretty simple feature, maybe obvious, um, but what we found was that there are a lot of companies that were creating an individual dashboard for one service or one product in Catchpoint, uh, maybe a set of dashboards, and then they were manually replicating that for all the other services that we that they were monitoring, and that became just, you know, as a product manager at heart, you know, one of those things, we want to make that easier. So just being able to click on a dashboard and duplicate dashboards, and somebody used duplicate dashboards yesterday, um, I'm glad, Scott. Uh, very happy to be able to, you know, provide that. That's certainly something I would want, um, and that works for any of the custom dashboards, whether it's um, Stack Map or uh, um, Earth View for RUM or just your regular custom dashboards. Another feature, speaking of things that people ask for, global audit log. Global audit log, it's not just change log. Change log is the very detailed, you're looking at a test or, some, or a dashboard and you wanna see what is the change log specifically for this item. Global audit log often used just at a corporate for security and accountability. Um, this gives you the ability just to see who did what and when. So it's across your entire client. Um, it's pretty easy to access. It's it's right, it's, it's available in the charm, what we call the charm bar. It's that top menu bar in Catchpoint. Um, and you can see it right there. It'll be new as of, as of yesterday. Uh, it was just released out in links. So hopefully that will be um, useful to you and maybe get some uh, 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 if you're being hounded by your security team or or your your auditor for that kind of information, well, now it's available. All right, let's take uh, a minute to talk about just from a web experience perspective. A lot of the things I just spoke about really are platform wide. Um, so. This is from the Catchpoint 2024 Reliability Survey. We've been doing these reliability surveys for a while, and overall you can see really broad agreement that, well, performance is at least as important as availability. It seems obvious, right? Um, every time I see slow is the new down, you know, I've been seeing this, we've been saying it probably for years. Slow is like the, the old new down. If you're not worrying about performance, you're only worrying about availability, you're, you're missing a lot. But Howard, do you want to say anything about the uh, um, uh, the the reliability survey that that we released, or this particular chart? Yes, the, thanks, Matt. Yeah, so the reliability survey. Uh, uh, so we've been doing the SRE survey for six or seven years now, uh, working on the next one right now. The reliability survey. It was the first, this is the first year that we've released that. Uh, we'll make that available. Uh, we'll drop the link into the chat, but definitely a great document. If you've not had a chance to take a look at it, uh, definitely do so. Uh, we believe it's something that just some of the stats and findings in there can help you, um, you all, you know, justify your business cases, um, and, you know, support some of the decisions that you're all making moving forward to improve, you know, the overall reliability and resilience of your solutions. Back to you, Matt. Thanks. Yeah, great. It's, it, it's always good to see um, justification or just support for, for what you probably um, have been thinking or believe in uh, strongly already. Otherwise, you wouldn't you wouldn't be here. Um, and yeah, thanks for correcting me. This is the first reliability survey, the SRE survey every year. That is great, by the way. Always keep your eye out for that. I like it. Uh, and Howard's posted a link. Thank you. So let's talk about web page test. Um, we have been working uh, um, pretty diligently uh, over this, this, this past year to bring web page test 
fully and natively into the Catchpoint portal. And that, that, that process is, is virtually complete. Um, we've done a lot in the last few releases. Um, uh, in terms of web page test as an instant test in Catchpoint, um, opportunities and experiments. Experiments are those really cool uh, no code, uh, the no code ability to, to try variations and changes in your web page. Uh, to see what the performance is without developing it and rolling it out. So you can, um, well, I won't go into it now because we could spend a lot of time on it. It's a very cool feature, but check that out in web page test. It is a, a, uh, a very cool um, capability. Again, no code, change your website, see what the impact is um, without and before actually coding in that change. Um, yeah, so some of the other things, uh, test records compare. Records compare is pretty helpful. If you need to compare the records of a couple of different um, uh, uh, test runs, that's important. The ability to see the whole video in the waterfall is, is very helpful. See that in, in sort of a live looking manner. Um, carbon control, there's, you know, continuing interest in what's the, what's the, the environmental impact um, of your website. Uh, kind of uh, uh, debatable exactly how to calculate that. There are a handful of different um, ways and uh, we have been um, monitoring and contributing to the industry and how, how best to do that. But, but especially it's great to be able to see comparison is what you're doing helping or, or hurting um, compared to the last release or the releases before. So that's a, a helpful thing. And in some parts of the world, uh, this type of, this type of uh, capability um, and accountability is, is becoming required. Uh, supporting additional locations and custom metrics, you know, all in uh, web page test, uh, catch point web page test in the catch point portal. Some of the, the benefits, you know, why enable web page test in the catch point portal when you can access it from webpagetest.org, also a catch point website. Um, well, the benefits really are because you're, you're using the same platform, getting internal alignment um, between things like the web developers, SREs, front end developers, and so forth. There are 100,000 users of web page test. So if you're using Catchpoint, um, synthetic testing or RUM, uh, tracing, any of the other capabilities that, that we offer, odds are very, very high that people in your organization are already using web page test. Um, having a common place to look at data, to compare data, as well as use some of the other capabilities that we have, like dashboards and smart boards and experience score and run SLOs, um, uh, copy dashboard now, um, as well as as well as uh, uh, you know using RUM. A lot of people who use web page test are interested in RUM data um, or tracing. Uh, so using that from a common platform to us seemed like uh, pretty much of a, a no brainer. Speaking of RUM, we've made a lot of enhancements to RUM as well. Um, this is from the new smart board, which is an all-in-one dashboard uh, that, that we use. I use it uh, basically to identify and troubleshoot uh, issues. This is a preview you can see in the upper corner or in your own portal. You, you do enable it. Um, we're really, it's only preview so that we can make sure that it has the functionality and the data and the information that you need. And uh, really like with anything with Catchpoint, if you have um, uh, uh, re uh, requests or recommendations, please let us know because that's really the purpose um, for, for what we're trying to do to provide tools and capabilities that make your jobs um, more valuable in your company, make your contribution to your company more valuable and your lives easier. We've also added uh, frustration metrics, so um, rage clicks, dead clicks, errors, and thrashing cur cursor. Uh, that's always useful to uh, to, to track um, for obvious reasons. Interaction to next paint. INP is a replacement, is a core web vital replacement for first input delay. Uh, so basically this indicates how long it took for your web page to respond to some action by the user. So now we've made that um, easier to pinpoint and that's in, uh, that is in SmartBoard 
um, uh, and, and just supported by rum in Catchpoint in general. And uh, just a teaser for coming soon, we are um, in active development um, uh, on a, an open telemetry based mobile rum product. If you're interested in that, if you, we're, we are looking for some companies to do some usability testing on the smart board for that as well. If you're interested, let us know. Um, but that is something that we're, we're really excited about and um, uh, hoping we'll, well, we are planning to roll that out soon, given the pace that, that we are able to um, build things uh, that, uh, that should be pretty soon. All right, also waiting for my, there we go. So um, another result from our reliability survey uh, on service level objectives. You can see this is the second item up there. Uh, the second, you know, should your organization prioritize? What should, what should you be prioritizing over the 12, uh, uh, next 12 months? SRE, an obvious one, service level and experience level um, objectives. So um, Howard, anything else to say on the, the survey, uh, I mean, the uh, um, uh, the reliability survey, uh, other than yeah, the Yeah, I, I think these, these results uh, pretty much speak for themselves, right? This is something that everybody's recognizing, that there's a huge need, right? SREs uh, right up there, and we'll see more details on SRE and both the Google Dora report, which comes out shortly in uh, our own SRE report, uh, but service level um, objectives, uh, XLOs are something that folks really need to be focusing on now. And that's what we're hearing and that's what we're seeing. So. Great, so let's, let's talk about SLOs and, and XLOs. You guys probably know this, so I'm, I'm not gonna spend much time on it, you know, the SLA, that's the agreement. We offer 99.995, whatever, availability. And if we fail that, we will give you some of your money back kind of thing. The SLO is the actual objective, you know, 99.9, whatever. Um, and the indicator is the actual metric that you're, that you're measuring. Um, so <laughs> SLO versus XLO. Um, if, an, if a service level objective is, is the performance goal for a service, really an XLO, I think of an XLO as the same thing as an SLO, except it's measuring that um, in a way that, that uh, represents what the user experiences. So in Catchpoint, for simplicity, we call everything an SLO, but if you are monitoring and you're tracking an SLO and you're using data that's collected from backbone or last mile wireless nodes, that's an XLO because you're testing in line with the delivery of service to your customers. That's, that's why, you're, why you're doing it. So um, just, uh, you know, that's SLO versus XLO. Don't get hung up on it. Um, but XLO is really is the terminology that I see more and more people using for what that's worth. What we've done is since our last webinar, we've added several new performance metrics for creating XLOs. These are things like core web vitals, cumulative layout shift, first contentful paint, and so forth. Some of them are a mouthful, time to interactive, response time, DNS time, not a core web vital obvious, but you know, is it helpful to have a, 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 an XLO on your DNS time? Does DNS ever, DNS never goes down. DNS is never the fault, right? So it, it's not always the fault, but it's an, it, it often is the first thing to look at. Um, wait time, test time, and of course, well, those are in addition to what we've already had, which is test time and availability. So um, again, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of, of SLOs and XLOs, even if you're not reporting them to be part of an SLA that your customer gets or reporting them as an SLO to your boss or your executive. This gives you something to measure against. And there are recommendations for what some of these metrics should be, which is very helpful. 
So this is a, a burn down chart, um, which if you're not familiar with it, a burn down chart shows you the performance trend of your XLO or SLO, whether you're on track to meet it or not. Um, if you uh, if you're above the dashed line, you're generally generally thought that you're uh, um, you're 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 in good shape to meet your SLO or XLO, and if you're below it, well, you're trending in in the wrong way. And on the left is basically your how many how many minutes of of violation can you support? So um, if the line goes down to zero, you failed. This is a three month view of this XLO, so hence. You can see the three months, but we also support weekly and 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 uh, uh, daily views. Right now, they're looking pretty good as of August. This this is a popular movie theater website. Um, I won't tell you who it is, but it you know it could you know who those sites are, right? Uh, Movies.com and Fandango and AMC Theater and so forth. Um, so it's it's one of those movie sites, and you know they're at risk. What do you think? Do you think they're going to meet their their XLO or or not? And by the way, um, this is largest contentful paint. Google recommends two and a half seconds or less for the seventy fifth percentile. Uh, this XLO, I wanted to be a little generous, and I made it. I think it was four seconds. Um, movie sites often have big images on it. Just trying to be not so harsh on them. Well. Looking at that exact same site um, and comparing uh, availability versus performance. Most SLOs are on availability, but that just doesn't give you the full picture, right? Well, if you look on the left, they, the, the SLO here is 99.95. Um, great news. Services, I'm sorry, 99.5, yeah. Services, fantastic, 100% availability. People must love this service. It's great. On the right, it's that same um, XLO on, on largest contentful paint, the same one I showed before, except now it's after the quarter end. Y you see, they, they started to trend better, but they didn't make it. So what does that mean? That, that means that not just you're failing the, the XLO, which is a great, it, at least internally, they should be looking at this but your customers are getting poor performance. They're waiting, they're waiting for the large images to load, for the page to be interactive maybe. Um, I, I've got XLOs on the same, on those other metrics as well. Time to interactive, frankly, it's even worse. Um, but yeah, uh, really at this point, you're hoping customers wanna see that movie so bad and buy the ticket from you that they're not gonna bounce. But in a lot of cases, you know, if you're selling something online or there are a lot of cases people are just going to bounce. They're not going to wait for that. So um, that's SLOs. I, uh, again, I would just personally recommend that even if you're not using SLOs and XLOs um, for your customers and you know your your executives, use them internally. These are available and these are free to use. You can create XLOs and Catchpoint. Um, on the tests that you have, so your tests consume points, the XLOs, they don't consume any other points. This is just um, uh, an additional way to view your data, the data that you collect. Switching to tracing. So earlier this year, we ro rolled out an open telemetry based tracing product. You know, as you guessed, I mentioned with RUM, we're, we're very big on open telemetry. Um, uh, we think that it's really helpful both for our customers. We hear many companies tell us you have to be open telemetry um, compliant or support open telemetry. And, and that's, that is important to us true, uh, too. We often try to answer with Catchpoint uh, the reason why people use us. And I've heard many customers say the question that they have often is, is it us or someone else when there's a problem? So, if the problem is somewhere else, we do a fantastic job in in Catchpoint of showing you where is it that DNS problem is, you know, do you need a better time to interactive or or is your traffic being routed 
uh, uh, through another country uh, where it shouldn't be because your CDN is, is, is misconfigured. Um, we do a great job of that. If the problem is you, you want to drill down really directly from your synthetic test. That's something that you know, we have companies doing today. Um, tracing is our answer to be able to provide that um, natively right in catch point, um, the ability to just go from your synthetic test and drill down into your distributed uh, applications and even down to the code level. It's done with uh, um, open telemetry. And in some, in the, this is something that we have rolled out. I think we spoke about it at the last uh, uh, release webinar in May. Some of the capabilities that we've rolled out recently are things like what you're seeing here, this overview uh, system level dashboard. You can see the various tracing systems on your left and anyone that you're using, you can click in and navigate. And this is a flow view. You also, we also have a cluster view and you know the standard things that you would expect from a tracing application, but right here um, in, in uh, Catchpoint, uh, we added a system and service health score. This application, well, it's a zero, um, so that's not good. And uh, as well as just the ability to use Control Center, which you would be familiar with for RUM and, for, and synthetic tests, uh, using library and all those other capabilities, the Control Center helps um, just to be able to set this up. Um, our goal with tracing is to provide something that is simple to use, simple to implement and adopt. Um, pricing is very, very simple, so it's not, you know, how many gigabit hours of data you're storing, you know, we don't, uh, you know, as the head of product, I, I, I certainly don't want any customers to be hit with an $80,000 surprise bill because they're, they're using more data than they experience, so we don't charge based on that. Um, and yeah, it's a little bit of a commercial for this, but if you're interested in this, um, please let us know because uh, um, that interest is growing and we're still looking for feedback on any early product. Um, it is fully GA and uh, we are continuing to roll out capabilities. So uh, let us know if that's something that you're interested about. Now let's change topics a little bit. A lot of companies already use Catchpoint in their CI/CD process. If you're on this call, you probably are doing this too, directly or indirectly. Um, you know, setting up your service, making changes, testing those changes. Um, most problems occur with a change, even you know, still today, whether that change is manual or automated. So, just having your your monitoring. Uh, strategy linked in with your deployment strategy is is an obvious thing and and certainly not uh, not new. So I won't really uh, walk through that slide. We offer multiple APIs, multiple ways of um, accessing Catchpoint information, and uh, uh, most of these are used uh, very very frequently. Um, and heavily by by uh, our customer base. So obviously there's the REST API. Um, we have been migrating from V1 to V2, V3, which is uh, offers a, a, a lot of improvements um, in addition to the fact that to the API um, uh, limits per hour per day, um, we, we don't count any API requests that have to do with creating or or um, configuring or requesting configuration about about your tests, for example, that's the bulk of what people do. Um, so that is a, um, a a big improvement just by that alone. In general, the V2 and V3 API capabilities um, uh, far outstrip what can be done with V1. Um, We've got the real-time data push as well, the, the data webhook, heavily used for getting that data in basically a stream. Alert webhook, similar when alerts are created, they get sent out. Alert webhook is probably the most commonly used webhook, especially for a lot of integrations, sending alert information to other systems um, and so forth. I think for time, I'll speed this up. Um, Playwright and Puppeteer, 
you know, this is playwright by Microsoft and puppeteer by Google. This is where the industry is as far as and heading as far as browser transaction testing. Both of these are GA. Um, they're cross they're cross browser functional um, capabilities. So Edge and Chrome, for example, uh, are supported today. They they handle pop ups and multiple tabs. That's something that we offer today with Playwright um, and Puppeteer. Um, client certificates, uh, DNS. Uh, override and request overrides that we have added. So some of the capabilities that we've had in our Selenium-based Chrome testing, making sure that all of those are in Playwright and Puppeteer, just because, again, that's where the industry is, is heading. Um, plus, we've added the ability to convert simple test types, for example, from Chrome to Playwright. That's, that's in the three-dot menu in Control Center. If you click on a test and you see convert, you can convert that to a different type. Uh, and uh, we are working on an AI-based tool uh, that will convert Selenium scripts uh, as well. So I'm excited for that to be coming out. Speaking of AI, um, a lot of what we've done, you know, I mentioned, I mentioned uh, um, the, the, the script converter. All the talk in AI is on, is on generative AI and chatbots. Most of our customers virtually all of our customers have told us that what's really important to them is the data. So a lot of what we've been focusing on are things like massive correlation and trend shift detection and trend shift correlation and, and things like that. Um, Internet stack map is in a sense a massive correlation engine behind a dashboard that shows you a live system level view of, of your service. In this case, that's the service on the top. Um, and the health of your service and its relationship, its dependency on other services like DNS, like CDN, um, adware, um, MarTech services, your backend services as well, um, the dependency that you have on them. So if those go down, um, are they correlated to your service being down? That's what that is what Internet Stack Map does. It is integrated with sonar, so any anything that we that we monitor and detect with our sonar um, uh, uh, product as well is automatically reflected in here. Uh, so this is a this is an amazing capability. I could spend the entire time just talking and demoing that, but we'll we'll give uh, Rob a, a minute to show you. Um, so uh, this is a this is a big part of that, and some of the capabilities that we've added. Um, well, just not just correlating uh, your regular test information like web um, and object so forth tests, but network performance as well, because you want to see, you know, how how does the um, how does how do changes in the network um, or network problems? How do they impact your service? Uh, in addition, things like just filtering um, on on your geolocations uh, is is an obvious capability and as well as getting data from API tests, because a lot of services, especially mobile services, rely on API testing. Also, fully functional dashboard, drill in, slice and dice data, and so forth. I mentioned stack, I'm, I'm sorry, I mentioned sonar. Um, so you, you can see what sonar is. We detect outages around the world, um, as well as network outages and network uh, um, impacts. Uh, the ability to filter sonar to a given stack map is important because if you're using stack map, you, you probably want to see what are the outages for the services in my particular stack map. You may have multiple stack maps. What are the outages that are detected by sonar for those services? And we show that here. This is a view of sonar filtered to a, a given stack map. Um, this is for... Uh, 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 um, this is a, a, a previous moment in time. That's why uh, services are green. So if there was an outage, um, but that outage has um, been corrected, the, that service has recovered, you'll see that as recent outages and you'll see that um, as green. If there are multiple outages, you'll see a number in the circle. And any service that um, is in your stack map but doesn't have an outage, we show that below in, in those services that are not um, that are not affected, uh, as well as just overall, 
coloring in a darker gray um, the services, the regions that um, are, are relative to that specific stack map. So if you have a stack map that is only concerned with service in Europe or Asia, or in, in this case, North America, um, that area uh, of, the, of the world will be, will be color coded correspondingly. So um, with that, let me turn it over to Bob. Um, you've heard me speak enough, maybe too much. And uh, Bob can give a demo. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. And uh, I will bring up my screen here. Hopefully everyone can see this. Um, so great. So uh, in the next five minutes or so, what I wanted to do was uh, introduce you to one of the new programs and services that I am very excited about, uh, which is App Assure. Um, so as, as we mentioned earlier, um, my name is Bob Ruggiero. I'm the director of the solution engineering team here at Catchpoint. And um, this new program is really, the, the, the goal here is to provide a, a faster time to value, speed up the time to value um, by providing opportunities that allow you to improve your performance, improve the availability of your most business critical applications. Uh, and, and in the end, make it more resilient. So as Howard mentioned earlier, AppAssure is really a turnkey solution, meaning that there's nothing that you need to install. Uh, there's no training that needs to be uh, facilitated for your teams. Um, all you have to do is provide us with the application that you care about. And, and that's a matter of you know, giving us a, a URL, uh, maybe a set of workflows that typical users would go through in that application. So if it's a retail app, it might be adding a product to the cart, checking out, things like that. If it's um, you know an application or a developer-centric uh, type site where people are checking in and checking out code, tell us what those workflows are and, and we'll build the test for it. If it's a banking application, you might be withdrawing, transferring funds, things like that. It doesn't matter what the app is, from manufacturing to insurance claims, Tell us what the URL is, tell us what the workflows are, and our team of experts will go ahead and literally within hours, go out, create a set of tests that provide that complete visibility into the application. So we'll develop tests that target you know, specific APIs, if there's APIs that are used within the app. Um, we'll set up tests that validate the DNS services. Matt mentioned earlier, that's always the first thing that, that you want to look at. Um, we will do workflow type checks. How long did it take for someone to log into the app? How long did it take for them to check out? How long did it take for them to perform a search? Things like that. Uh, we'll do validations of your SSL certificates. You know, when are they going to expire and notify you, um, you know, as that expiration date gets closer? Uh, we'll do network level testing. So the goal and, and the point here is that, like I said earlier, in a matter of hours, these tests will be enabled based on best practices, proven methodologies that our team of experts have driven value with across a lot of our customers already. We'll get that set up enabled so you can start seeing the insights and the value from that telemetry and from that data. And one of the visualizations that we'll use to surface up those insights is stack map. So as Matt mentioned earlier, it's um, a visual representation of all of the services and dependencies that drive your application. Catchpoint automatically discovers these services based on the tests that we've enabled. So whether that be your DNS providers, your CDNs, uh, any third-party services like tag managers or social media um, um, entries, advertising services, APIs, all the way to your back-end cloud providers, we're going to automatically flag cases where a particular service is degraded or just flat out has failed. And then that gives you the insight as to, okay, who do we need to get involved to further troubleshoot this problem? and not necessarily have to get into a war room situation where everyone is, is on the phone pointing fingers as to you know, who's gonna own that problem. We're gonna do a lot of that analysis for you. 
Uh, but you also have the ability to click into a degraded service, look at the records that have caused that failure, and immediately within two to three clicks, have the data, have the information that we need so we know why a particular service is failing. And in this particular case, um, we have requests here, API requests that are going out to this uh, REST API called events.backtrace.io. And as we see, that's resulted in a 401. So that service is degraded. It's impacting our user experience. We now immediately know what the problem is and be can begin to investigate. So it's really that simplicity, that faster time to value that um, you know, we're going to provide through this AppAssure program. Um, if anyone is interested, please let us know. Happy to discuss it more. And um, I know I went through that quickly, but hopefully that, uh, that provides some, uh, some initial insights into the service. Um, with that, I will uh, stop sharing myself and maybe uh, we'll, we'll give it back to, um, to Howard for any questions. Awesome. Thank you, Bob. Great demo. Matt, great content as always.